In this video, we're going to take a look at absolute value inequalities. This is a follow-up to my video on absolute value equations, so if you did not watch that video, you might want to take a look at that video first. Anyway, in the first video, we decided that the absolute value means distance from zero. So we looked at the equation absolute value of x equals 2, and we said that that meant x was exactly two units from zero. X might be two units to the left of zero or two units to the right of zero, so the solution set for this equation was negative two and two. Now we're going to take this a step further and look at inequalities. So let's look at the question, what does absolute value of X greater than two mean? Remember, absolute value is a distance from zero, so this number must be more than two units from zero if its absolute value is greater than two. So we have to consider all numbers that are more than two units away from zero. And again, let's take a look at the number line. Clearly, if we are greater than two, we are more than two units away from zero. So any number to the right of two on the number line is going to fit this description. But there's also another possibility. If we were to the left of negative two, we would also be more than two units away from zero. So it turns out any number less than negative two also fits this description. So notice here we have infinitely many solutions. So this is much different than our solution to the absolute value equation. Whenever we switch from an equation to an inequality, we open the door to a lot more solutions. And in this case, there are infinitely many. Any number less than negative two or any number greater than positive 2 is going to have an absolute value greater than 2. So our solution set consists of two intervals. All numbers left of negative 2 we represent with the interval negative infinity to negative 2. And any number greater than 2 we represent with the interval 2 to infinity. These are disjoint separate sets, so we give our answer as the union of the two sets. The intersection wouldn't make any sense here because there is no intersection. Let's look at a third question. What does the absolute value of x less than 2 mean? Well, if we use similar logic, this must mean that x is less than 2 units away from 0. So again, back to the number line, we need to think about all the numbers that are less than 2 units from 0. And again, we could be less than two units to the right of zero, or we could be less than two units to the left of zero. So any number between negative two and two is going to fit that description. Again, we have infinitely many numbers here. We just need to make sure that our number is somewhere between negative two and positive two for this statement to be true. So here, our solution set is a single interval, all numbers between negative two and positive two. We'll find as we look at a few more examples that if our absolute value is greater than a positive number, our solution set will have two intervals. And if our absolute value is less than a positive number, your solution set will have only one interval. So let's go ahead and take a look at a few more examples. First example we're going to take a look at is the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than 6. So we have some number. And according to this inequality, this number is less than six units from zero. Don't be afraid to draw a picture. If we're looking at a number line, and zero is located right here, we need to account for every single number that is less than six units from zero. So certainly all the numbers between zero and six would be less than six units from zero. But don't forget, anything between negative 6 and 0 would also be less than 6 units from 0. So that means my number x minus 2 could be anywhere between negative 6 and positive 6. All of the numbers in this shaded region would satisfy this statement. If you draw a picture, it's really nice because then I just have to translate what we see in the picture to an algebraic statement. So I'm going to take my number x minus 2 and I'm going to do exactly what's shown. I'm going to take my number and put it in between negative 6 and positive 6. If we're to the left of 6, that means we're less than 6. 
And if we are to the right of negative 6, that means we are greater than negative 6. So we can solve a two-sided inequality to find the solution to the statement. So now if I'm going to solve this inequality, I simply have to add 2 to all three portions of this statement. Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. x minus 2 plus 2 is just x. And 6 plus 2 is 8. So it turns out for this statement to be satisfied, our number x needs to be between negative 4 and 8. So my interval would be all numbers between negative 4 and 8. Now remember, we don't just have two solutions here because this is not an equation. This is an inequality. So we want to make sure our answer shows that there are infinitely many possibilities here. As long as x is anywhere between negative 4 and 8, this statement is going to be true. So my solution set is the interval containing all numbers between negative 4 and 8. Okay, so the next example we're going to take a look at is the absolute value of 2x plus 7 is greater than or equal to 1. So again, we have some number that is more than one unit from zero. Again, don't be afraid to look at a picture. We need to account for every number that is more than one unit from zero. So as long as we're to the right of one, we're clearly more than one unit away from zero. But we would also be more than one unit away from zero if we were to the left of negative one. You know, for example, negative five. How far away from zero is negative five? Well, it's five units from zero, which is more than one unit from zero. So any number left of negative one or to the right of positive one is going to work. So that's what this number must be. It could be one of two places. 2x plus 7 might be left of negative one. And when we express left algebraically, we say less than. So it turns out 2x plus 7 could be less than negative 1. I'm also going to include negative 1 because this inequality says greater than or equal to. So one possibility is that my number is less than or equal to negative 1. Or my number 2x plus 7 could be to the right of 1, and right means greater than. So I have 2x plus 7 is greater than or equal to 1. Here we have to write two separate inequalities because there are two separate regions where our number must lie. The last example we did, our number was between two numbers. There was only one region, so I was able to solve that inequality all at once. We can't do that here because there are two separate places, and this has got to be an or statement. Because if you think about it, there's no way we could be both of these two places at once. So it can't be an and statement. What we have is an or statement. So I'm going to solve both of these inequalities. Here, if I subtract 7 from both sides, I get negative 8. And then I divide by 2. So one possibility is that x is less than or equal to negative 4. And if I do the same thing over here, when I subtract 7, I get negative 6. And then I divide by 2. x might be greater than or equal to negative 3. And again, there's no way I can be both of these places at once, so my solution set is going to have two separate intervals. Any number less than or equal to negative 4 is going to work. I represent that with the interval negative infinity to negative 4. I'm going to use a bracket around negative 4 because the bracket denotes that I'm including negative 4 as one of my solutions. The second possibility is that x might be greater than or equal to negative 3 which would be every number between negative 3 and infinity. And again, I'm going to use the bracket around negative 3 because I do want to include that as part of my answer. And then hopefully you remember from before that when we have an or statement, we can use the union symbol. So my solution set here is the union of two intervals, all numbers between negative infinity and negative 4, and all numbers between negative 3 and infinity, and both negative 3 and negative 4 are solutions as well. So the third example we're going to take a look at is the absolute value of 3x minus 2 is greater than 7. So here, we, again, we have some number. And according to this inequality, it is more than 7 units from 0. 
So if we think about where that would put us on the number line, we could either be more than seven units to the right of zero, or we could be more than seven units to the left of zero, which means our number is somewhere either to the right of seven or it could be to the left of negative seven. So again, we have to solve this one in two separate inequalities because there are two separate places our number could be. One possibility is that our number is to the left of negative seven, and remember less means less than. The other possibility is that our number is to the right of positive seven, and to the right means greater than. So our number three x minus two could be less than negative seven, or it could be greater than positive seven, and again, an or statement is really the only kind of statement that makes sense here. If I solve both of these inequalities, if I add 2, I get negative 5. So x might be less than negative 5 thirds. That's part of my solution set. The other part of my solution set, if I add 2 to both sides here, I get 9. And if I divide by 3, I get 3. So the other part of my solution set would be any number greater than 3. So again, my solution set is going to have two intervals. All numbers less than negative 5 thirds, which I would denote with the interval between negative infinity and negative 5 thirds. Notice I'm using a parenthesis this time because negative 5 thirds should not be part of my solution set. I do not have it equal to as part of this statement. And then the second part of my solution set will be every number greater than 3, which I denote by the interval of all numbers between 3 and infinity. So negative infinity, negative 5 thirds, union 3 to infinity would be my solution set. Okay. Before we do one more, let's just think about the situation. What would happen if I replaced this 7 with a negative 7? Okay. We sort of talked about this in the last video. This statement says that our number is more than negative 7 units away from 0. What would that mean? Don't forget, when we take an absolute value, we're talking about a distance, and we're always talking about a positive number. So this inequality gives us some positive number. I don't know what positive number it is, but it's definitely a positive number. And we're trying to figure out when that positive number is greater than negative 7. Well, isn't a positive number always going to be greater than negative 7? I think so. Positive numbers are always greater than negative 7. So we do not have to do any algebra here whatsoever. We just have to think about it. When is the number going to be more than negative 7 units from 0? That doesn't really make sense. But we know we're talking about a positive number being greater than negative 7, which always works. So our solution set here would be everything all numbers between negative infinity and infinity. You can pick any number you want. If you plug it in to this statement, you will end up with something that is true. Okay. The other hand, what if we had the absolute value of 3x minus 2 less than negative 7? Again, this is going to be some positive number no matter what I plug in. Once I take the absolute value, it's going to be positive. So we're comparing a positive number to negative 7. When is a positive number less than negative 7? That is never going to happen. So your solution set here would be nothing, the empty set. Anytime you're comparing an absolute value to a negative number, you should not have to do any algebra. All you should have to do is think about whether the statement works or whether the statement doesn't work. Okay, let's just try one more, and then I'm going to give you a couple to try. So the fourth one we're going to look at is 3 times the absolute value of 2x minus 4 less than or equal to 5. Okay? So we've seen something like this in the last video. Whenever we're working with absolute values, we really want to focus on the absolute value part separately. So our first job is to remove this 3 and this negative 4 from the left side of our inequality. I could easily do that by adding 4 to both sides. That would give me 3 times the absolute value of 2x less than or equal to 9. And then I could divide both sides of this statement by positive 3. It's a positive 3. Remember, when we divide an inequality by a positive number, the inequality should be exactly the same. 
If you're dividing by a negative number, don't forget that those inequalities have to be reversed in order to keep your statement true. Now I have some number that is less than three units from zero. If I'm going to be less than three units from zero, where does that put me? It's somewhere between negative three and three. All of the numbers between negative three and three, we could definitely say are less than three units from zero. So that's where this number needs to be. So again, I don't have two separate intervals here. I can do this in one interval. I can just say that my number 2x is between negative 3 and positive 3. And I can also include negative 3 and positive 3 in this as well, because we're looking at less than or equal to. Then I have, just have to divide each part by 2. And I get x between negative 3 halves and positive 3 halves. So any number between negative 3 halves and positive 3 halves, including negative 3 halves and 3 halves, is going to make this statement true. So my solution set here would be all numbers between negative 3 halves and positive 3 halves. I'm using brackets because we want to include both of those numbers as a solution. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you two examples I want you to try on your own. I'm going to ask you to hit pause, try the two examples, and then when you're done you can hit play again and I will reveal the solutions. Uh, the first one is the absolute value of x plus 9 is greater than 11. And the second one I would like you to try is the absolute value of 5x plus 4 less than or equal to 9. So go ahead and hit pause now, work these out, and when you think you've got the answer, hit play, and I will reveal the correct answers.